Ubisoft has set itself as one of the biggest gaming companies out there, and yet despite being so big, they've also garnered a lot of bad reputation with how they handle their games and communities. But this has been going on for a while now, and I can tell you, it won't ever change. Let's get into the details of why exactly that is. Ubisoft has made some banger franchises. Let's take a look at, for instance, Assassin's Creed or Far Cry, games that set themselves apart. One was a stealth game where you played as an assassin, which is basically just a history game in and of itself. And then the other was more action focused, where you were a one man army fighting a well, literal army. And they all had their own identities. There are more games that Ubisoft made, more franchises that also had their own identities, like Splinter Cell or Beyond Good and Evil, games that set themselves apart. And this remained the same for about the beginning of the 2010s. This now has changed. And for instance, when we look at Far Cry 3, no other game in the franchise since then has really changed that much when we look at it. I mean, it really does rely on its villains to deliver some really great performances and to garner a audience for the game. Gameplay loop, however, is actually still the same 10 years later. I'm sure that, you know, there are more mechanics added and the map is different and you have different cars and weapons, but the majority of the game is still the same 11 years later. Assassin's Creed sadly also has this problem when we take a look at Origins, Odyssey, and then Valhalla. Those are three games that are pretty much the same same again same concept where it's like yes yeah, sure more little mechanics were added like abilities and there's a different map and different stories and i'm sure that they're not bad the majority of the gameplay loop is still exactly the same in all three of those games and being able to play one game and then going over to the next one and just seeing that it's kind of the same but just in a different coat of paint is not really what you're supposed to get for a different game in the franchise with 60 bucks uh, asked, asked again. This could never be said, and that's what I'm trying to convey here. This could never be said about Black Flag or Assassin's Creed 3. Look at the difference between those two games and look at the difference between any of the older Assassin's Creed's, for instance. And you can tell me like, sure, Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood and Revelations are three games that are quite alike. They have a lot of things alike, but they set themselves apart. They were still a lot more niche because it was, was really focused about that stealth part of the game. It was really focused on a certain type of audience, and now they've garnered to a more generic audience, and I don't really know if that is uh, the right choice here. Personally, I do not really like that these games have changed so much, but it, it works, right? Ubisoft has some very generic game design, but it works because if it didn't work, they would just stop doing it. The problem that comes with that is that their games kind of lose their identity. When you look at a game, a lot of times when I look at a game, I see this and I see like, oh, this is like a Far Cry. Like that's honestly how I look at certain games because Far Cry 3 was pretty much the first game that I played that showed me like, hey, you have an old island and you have to unlock parts of the island by doing outposts and this and that. And that is still the exact same thing in Far Cry 6, but that is of course now also the same thing in Assassin's Creed and in other franchises as well, outside of Ubisoft even. That makes it way too generic. That just like what is special about me playing one game or that game, just there's a bit of a different mechanic in there. Not really something that lets me like play the game for a long time and keeps me engaged. Let's also not forget that these single player games have cosmetics. And sure, a lot of games do that. And I'm willing to pay like five bucks to support an indie dev team or maybe even a bigger dev team because they did a really good job. But when you just have pretty much no cosmetics in your game for free, when you've already paid 60 bucks for it, and then you have a shop that asks at least eight bucks for like your horse or whatever or whatever you ride to be like a special wolf with like a tattoo on it like why would i pay eight bucks for that if i've already paid 60 for the game and most cosmetics like that are really cool will cost you like 20 bucks they're super unrealistic and i'm I'm also very aware that Assassin's Creed isn't really that realistic to begin with, but they used to still care a little bit about realism. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to convey a wrong message here. I want you to have fun with these games, right? Like if you're having fun with these games, have fun with them. I'm not here to be the boogeyman and say, no, stop having fun. 
What I am saying, though, is that we have to be critical about these games. We have to realize that when you look at Assassin's Creed 3 and Black Flag, for instance, there was a lot of difference between those games, and a lot of people really, really, really loved both of those games, despite them being so different. We now know, because of this, that Ubisoft, the way they've been releasing games lately, well, they could be doing a lot better. So why aren't they? Then we also, of course, have live service games. The only two I want to talk about today are uh, For Honor and Rainbow Six Siege. For Honor has a very small player base at this point with only like 3000 people playing it, which is still kind of good for a game that's as old as it is. But every update, they've just made the game worse. Uh, Marching Fire was an update that absolutely ruined the game for me. And for a lot of people, I think uh, is that that is the point where For Honor kind of went down into the mud and never really came out of it. I stopped playing since then. Rainbow Six Siege actually has a good player base now. I don't know exactly how many, but I do know it's still doing really, really well. It also fell down in the mud, but it was able to crawl back out of it, in my opinion. Two years ago, the game wasn't fun at all, but now the game is actually really, really fun and kind of back to its roots while still also being a bit more new but of course these games can get updated infinitely as we already see with for honor being like a lower player base we can keep updating these games forever and just imagine getting more and more money the next live service game by ubisoft is actually x defiant which released i think last month or or a bit longer than a month ago and it did really well i mean it was a good game i really enjoyed it myself but I don't hear anyone talking about it anymore. I think barely anyone still plays it because it was just another Call of Duty ripoff, I guess. And again, it tried to be very generic while also offering some cool little changes. But if you have a free to play game and it can't really keep its like attention going for months on end, like we're not talking about it anymore at this point, then wow, this is not good. And Ubisoft needs to really start changing up how they do their live service. Now, I've assessed Ubisoft's issues that I personally uh, have, well, well, that I care about uh, as a consumer of their product. I don't know what it is to work for Ubisoft. I don't know if that is a bad or a good working condition, but I do know that they have some issues. And why won't those issues change? Well, for one, I've already told you, <laughs> It works. Their their generic game design. It works. They can just make money off of it again and again and again. Uh, money comes piling in, and the next game is already in the works. Assassin's Creed Shadows is getting a lot of hate. A lot of hate for being really, really like bad in its realistic nature. Um, with their whole like making a black samurai. I'm not gonna go too much into that, but instead of making history and putting a little twist on it, they care more about inclusivity. But despite that, I am 100% certain a lot of people will buy the game. And the next Assassin's Creed will just be the same thing with a different coat of paint. They'll add a few mechanics, maybe here, this and that, and of course a new setting, and that's all cool and good work. And honestly, talented people that have worked on this, but no, that is just the same thing. And Far Cry will also be the same. Far Cry 7 or whatever it will be called is also just going to be the same exact game as it has been since Far Cry 3. That will never change. Now, of course, this also means that other franchises that Ubisoft could be working on will just not see the light of day again. I'm talking about uh, Splinter Cell. And then we also have Beyond Good and Evil 2, if you still remember that game. Uh, I think the latest cinematic trailer that you can actually still find is from 2018 and when that was originally shown i was actually really hyped um i hadn't even played the first game but i was kind of hyped you know i wanted to see what ubisoft could come up here but i'm not excited to see modern ubisoft make this uh, not after i saw star wars uh outlaws which looks really bad graphically speaking and again i feel like people like you need to understand that i'm not trying to say like oh my god ubisoft is so bad and we need to get rid of them and we need to boycott them for this or that reason like if you enjoy their games enjoy their games have fun with them but just remember that they could be 10 times better than they are because they're just generic and more people will buy it so if you can like vote with your wallet says i always say well then 
we won't have this problem in the future, of course. We've also, of course, got corporatization to thank for that. I mean, let's be honest here, all modern AAA studios have become this big company and it's all about money and shops and battle passes and this and that. They'll find any way to get as much money out of your pockets as possible. And Ubisoft is just part of that and they will not change. Ubisoft as it used to be in its glory days will never come back to that time. They will just be remembered as a company that just makes generic games that a lot of people will kind of enjoy, but not that a small niche community will enjoy very, very much. But that's of course all my opinion here i'd love to know what you guys think actually um so leave your opinions down in the comments below do you like ubisoft do you dislike ubisoft uh let me know so we can have a bit of a discussion about it down in the comment section and if you like commentary just like this well why not leave a like and subscribe to the channel uh you can have more content just like this and now that's all of me for today i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you in the next one